I'll come home, master. I was scoring today. As usual, Lucy is waiting for me outside. Something as simple as this is enough to put me at ease. Something I don't want to admit. It was the same as ever. Boring glasses, lunch, more boring glasses. Then I came home. Nothing out of the ordinary. How are my studies? Um, doing alright. Ah, uh, that's a relief. My grades have always been pretty good, actually. I don't need your concern. Is that so? Well, Master request any assistance. Please feel free to ask Lucy any time. Lucy will definitely be a big help. <laughs> what would, what good would come out of relying on you? Rush aside and enter the house. My body has been feeling heavier lately. I don't feel too good. Maybe it's because it's starting to get cold. I decide to take a shower first. I let the warm water run all over my frozen body. I feel it's really good. Oh. Taking a light shower, I step out of the bathtub. Then I wrap a towel around myself. At that moment, I feel someone's presence at the door. Lucy suddenly reveals herself. Ah! Fall backwards in surprise. I grip my towel lightly to make sure it doesn't come off. Why is the master so surprised? Says the clueless perpetrator. Hey! Who gave you the permission to barge in here? Hmm, a particular reason why Lulu's in the loud in that bathroom? I was taking a shower. Lulu came inside, no one left here in there at the wall, that's a plan. No problem. All I'm wearing is a towel, what kind of person? I stop as I finally come to a realization. She's a robot, and I'm a human being. It's natural that there wouldn't be any problems. It would be what people can, might consider normal. But I can no longer make that kind of distinction. I become unable to make such simple judgments. Hmm? It's nothing. Is that so? Lucy thinks that master. What the fuck? Doesn't look too well today. Master, all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Is Master sure? Yeah, so you can get out now. It was at that moment. When her forehead suddenly came into contact with mine, I had no time to react. Before I knew it, Lucy's face had ended up mere inches away from my nose. It's just as Lucy thought. But what? Planting the back away in order to create some space between us. But wh what do you think you're doing? It appears that Master's temperature is a little higher than normal. That startled me. I feel my heart beating a little fast. Why do I keep clicking the right mouse button? I don't know why. Don't, don't put your forehead against me so suddenly like that. You surprised me. Master was surprised? Uh, yeah. Lucy doesn't understand why Master would be surprised. Lucy didn't do anything that might surprise Master. Master explain? It's because... It's because... Hmm. Find it difficult to explain. This damn robot. Could it be that she already knows why I was so shocked? It's because his skin's too cold. <laughs> That's not true, Master. W what? It's not that Lucy's skin is cold. Just that Master's skin is a little warm. Uh, is that true? I haven't noticed myself. You, you just came out of the shower. What the fuck did you expect? 
enemy that uh, that still doesn't explain why you touched my forehead. <laughs> In case Master didn't know, Lucy also helps with the functionality of a silveroid. S silveroid? A type of robot specifically designed to assist the elderly. I hear they are referred to as silveroids. Lucy can die to solve basement for past professional doctors. Is capable of performing basic health examinations. She can analyze master's temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, urine, and so on. Not interested. I'm gonna put my clothes on, so just get out. Ah, please don't push Lucy. She needs to check master's condition. condition, condition, condition. I ignore her and continue pushing her outside, then I shut the door. I hurriedly got on my clothes and put them on. Whew. I'm almost finished with my studies for the day. Check the time and realize it's getting pretty late. Look around the room, but Lucy's nowhere to be seen. What could she be doing? I'd get a little curious. Get up from my chair to go look for Lucy. Speak of the devil. At that very moment, Lucy enters my room. What were you doing? Uh, Lucy was doing some chores. What could have possibly taken her so long? My curiosity is at its peak. But I hold back from questioning her further. It's time to ask something else. By the way. Yes? <sighs> Does my Sunday tell me his homework? What was it like when you arrived at the lab? The lab? What was it like? Um, did you get along with anyone there? Hmm. The researchers are all very nice people. You are very kind to Lucy. I don't trust Lucy when she calls people nice. I wonder if she's ever insulted anyone in her life. And if Lucy wants to pick someone in particular, there was a doctor Lucy was very fond of. A doctor? It was the person that created Lucy. She was calm, mature, and had an impressive moustache. Everyone there was kind, but he looked out for Lucy the most, and Lucy respected him the most. Do you want to see him again? Yes, he probably advises Lucy would definitely love to. Do you want to spend more time with him? Hmm, most certainly. And if there's an ability, Lucy would love to. I see. However, he stops for a moment. Lucy's happiest to meet Master's side. If, if in the future Master decides that he doesn't need Lucy anymore. And if Lucy's able to meet the doctor then, she would love to serve him again. So basically he's your second choice. It seems that way. Hee <laughs> hee. Hmm. But, are you satisfied with that? did it you better than I ever did, right? He knows a lot about robots too. And he'd probably be a better person to rely on whenever something happens. Wouldn't it be better for you to serve him as a master instead? Master, does he have no need for us any longer? What do you mean? If not, who would like Master to stop saying such things? As Lucy wants to stay by Master's side for a long time. Lucy's happy with her life here. Please stop saying such things. Hmm. I see. Well, that was being silly. To be able to find comfort in the words of mere robot. Tori felt like an idiot. The free laws of robotics. October 20th. You.
school ended a bit earlier than usual today. I heard they were celebrating something, but I've already forgotten what it was about. Probably nothing important. I hurry home. Lucy wasn't waiting for me outside. At this early hour, that's to be expected. She's probably doing some housework. You'll be surprised to know that I'm home already. Kind of looking forward to show to, to how she'll react. Could have phrased it a little bit different, like to see how she will react. I don't know. Feel like I'm almost missing. Hmm. Lucy wasn't in the living room either. But maybe she had gone to help out at the shop. It doesn't seem like the case. I hear a faint sound of someone humming. Hum, hum, hum. Hmm. I wonder what she's doing. Pick my way towards the source of the sound. I find Lucy there. Couldn't tell what she was doing at first. Apparently she's doing the laundry, you idiot. Upon a closer look, I could see that she's doing some laundry by hand, while silently watching a thing to myself. Washing machine's working fine, so why is she doing this? I'm about to call out to her, stop myself. I notice a mountain of thresholds piled up beside her, and another pile of pants right next to it. I couldn't tell how much they were just by looking. But there was probably something into the three digits. I was more perplexed than surprised. What's going on here? Ah! Nurse is back at this hour? I'm asking you what is going on here. Oh no, Lucy, I better hide everything before. Too late for that now. I'm not in the mood to go along with her foolishness. I pressure Lucy with a silent stare. What exactly is all this? Uh, it's massive and see it's, it's pile of laundry. Who's? Master and his father's. Lies. Even with all of our clothes combined, the pile would be much, much smaller than that. Just how many do you have here? Lucy hasn't tried counting, so... Where's this all from? Uh. Lucy only returns a nervous glance. He doesn't no respond. Looks like my father brought home everyone's clothes from work. I was wondering what you've been doing lately out of my sight, but I guess this is it, huh? Uh. When are you supposed to be done with this? You don't possibly mean today, right? Uh. Pierce was correct. Impossible to go through this amount in a single day, bro. Does this happen more often? What does Master mean? I'm asking if my father toys with you like this all the time. <laughs> Quit laughing, you moron. There's nothing funny about this. Y yes, master. I wonder why my father would do something like this. Probably because he wanted a reason to talk down to Lucy. Or maybe confusing this place with a dry cleaning facility. Even so, the way he's going on about this puts me at a loss for words. It's so childish that it makes me laugh. He's trying to make a modern Cinderella film. Just... Don't. Sorry? You don't have to do this. Why would you be doing laundry for complete strangers? Just leave it. Of course you can do that. Why not? His father's endorsed Lucy with this task. Lucy needs to do a good job in her. She does not want to disappoint father. 
Are you an idiot? Just look at how much there is. He's obviously asking for the impossible. Even so, Lucy will see this to the end. Lucy and Tim is working hard. She believes that Father will eventually come to acknowledge what Lucy can do. <sighs> and furthermore, Lucy doesn't think that Father would ask something unfeasible on purpose. Maybe he just believes in Lucy's abilities. Hmm. All right. This certainly is different from Cinderella. Here is a girl who is completely oblivious to a person's ill intent. Lucy doesn't feel that she's unfortunate. She doesn't feel that my father's demands are unfair. Ridiculousness. Absurdity. It's likely that these types of words don't even exist in a vocab. <laughs> vocabulary at all. Since all you can do is point out their flaws from afar, it's frustrating for me. It's like watching a an autistic child. This is pain for the person looking after her, but the child herself doesn't have a care in the world. Cinderella that does not wish to be saved. The mice that turn into horses. The lizard that turn into footman. The pumpkin that turns into carriage. And the prince waiting for Cinderella. He doesn't need any of those in the first place, however. About. Shouldn't leave her alone. Knowing the situation, I'm along again. Reluctantly, I extend my hand. I'll help you. Master? Who's this? I know, I know. You don't need my help, right? But it doesn't matter. I'm not doing this for your sake, so it doesn't matter what you think. Yeah, it's actually for my sake. For Master's sake? That's right. Master's helping Lucy for his own sake? Yeah. Lucy doesn't understand. Doesn't matter if you don't understand. Just take it as you will. Hmm. Well, Master insists. Thank you for helping, Lucy. Looks like she finally caved in. But even with that said, I wonder if there's really anything I can do to help out. The only washing machine we have is already going on full throttle. There's only so much this thing can manage. There won't be enough time. Looks like I have to turn Lucy in doing the laundry by hand. It'd be more efficient to grab the clothes in the single large bucket and wash them all at the same time. But it might leave behind something that my father can nitpick about. There's no choice. I roll up my sleeves and get to work alongside Lucy. What am I doing in this A? What am I doing in this day and age? It's like choosing to make fire with sticks and stones when you already have a working stove. I guess so. Wow, well, the results aren't looking too bad. Lucy and I, and the washing machines are all hard at work. We're making a lot of progress. Even so, the end is nowhere to be seen. The towering pile of trash shirts hasn't gotten that much smaller. As the mere sight of it causes me to sigh. Alright, bring it on. Motivate myself once more. Now that I've already become a part of this, I'll definitely have to finish by tonight, no matter what. At the moment Lucy returns from hanging out the wash clothes to dry, been chilly lately. Still they would dry in about 3 or 4 hours in the direct sunlight even in winter. But that's probably too much to hope for. This house only contains two male residents. Who would have thought a clothes dryer would ever come in handy? Seems like we'll have to iron the clothes after they've dried a little bit. We have a long way to go. My hands never stop moving. After a while, a thought suddenly comes to mind. Is there anything else? Anything else? What my father asked you to do, is there anything else? Um... You told Lucy to clean the storage room in his spare time. 
this. So, which we haven't even touched anything there for at least six years. The place of merch and cobwebs and dust. It won't be so easy to take the gunk of everything. It's not like there's anything inside we can use. It's simply unnecessary. It is more redundant work that my father chose to dump on Lucy. Come on, seriously? Something wrong, Master? It's nothing. Let's just get this done first. I found myself putting more strength into my fingers. Quite a long time has passed. It's already dark outside. As if we have done an equivalent exchange of time, the mountain of trash shards has nearly disappeared. I never expected I'd be able to finish it when I started. But the end was finally drawing near. Looks like we'll somehow manage to get it done by today. Here's some bustling coming from the front door. It appears that my father has returned. Lucy sets down her iron and hops over to the front door to greet him. Welcome home, father. I hear the voices all the way from here. I'm back. You finished the laundry I left you with? This voice has an unusually cheerful tone to it. Better be finished, or there will be consequences. That kind of voice. Almost done? Almost done? You sound surprised. He was probably wasn't expecting that kind of answer. I know for certain. But he really did ask Lucy for something he thought would be impossible. And he was planning to scold her when she failed to finish it. Before I knew it, my father had already entered the room. Standing at the door, staring at me. Phew. What do you think you're doing? As you can see, I am doing the laundry. I don't remember asking you to do such a thing. I'm just helping out a little because there was a lot to be done. It was clearly something Lucy could handle by herself. Hmm. For a while, my father doesn't say a word. He silently holds back his anger. How despicable. Being fast with it, my father continues. So you forced someone to help because you thought you wouldn't be able to f finish it by yourself? I can't believe such a disgraceful role would exist. My father, Lucy is. Finally catching up to him, Lucy tries to explain the situation. But my father isn't in the mood to listen. I don't want to hear any excuses. Ah! My father violently pushes Lucy aside, a thin fragile body slams against the wall. The arms and legs lose the strength and sprawl across the floor. What? I could immediately process what had just happened. Because of that, my reaction was delayed. What are you doing? I ran over to Lucy and help her up. I hurriedly check her condition. I don't know much about machines. But it doesn't seem like there's any significant damage. Quietly breathe a sigh of relief. Turn around and glare at my father. Phew. He knew that I was the one who had offered to help her. So why are you taking it out on Lucy? It's because the robot didn't do its job properly. Such an unreliable robot is worthless. Should be disposed of. Isn't it your fault in the first place, you old fart? You are forcing her to do the impossible. <laughs> old fart? Do you dare call me an old fart? Do the laundry for all of my co workers. Clean the storage room that we haven't touched in years. Why are you making her do all this meaningless crap? What exactly do you have against that? What do you mean what do I have against it? 
turn on a machine to use it. You don't keep it powered on without a purpose. Robots were created to work. They were created to handle all the tedious chores in place of us humans. What's wrong with making a machine to do some work when the purpose of its entire existence is to serve people? But this isn't something she needs to do. Are you talking about cleaning out the storage room? I've always been meaning to do that myself. I've just been postponing it. Even so, there's no need to force it onto her all at once, since it's not even important. It doesn't matter whether it's important or not. It's better to put the robot to use in some productive way than to keep it sitting in the back. To me, you're the one that's being strange. Are you being too obsessed with the robot? You're not confusing this robot with a real person, are you? words are putting me on the defensive. For some reason I begin to well up with anger. Look at her. Just come take a look at her. She talks and exact she talks and acts exactly like a real person. Do you still believe that she has no feelings of her own? Can you really say that without any doubts? Yeah, I can. You're the one who's being delusional. No matter how close the person that robot may be, it's not real. It's nothing but a toy imitating a person. It may act just like a real human being, but in the end, it's only a robot. It's a fake. Do not be fooled by its appearance. Why is it they cannot tell apart what is real and what is not? You're no different from those people who've lost their souls to these wretched imitations. Can I really call you my own son? Get a hold of yourself. Put down hard on my lips. And taste the saltiness of the blood. I open my mouth and attempt to say something back. But I'm stopped by Lucy. Master. Lucy grabs onto me. Hmm. Master. Please. Please stop this. Don't worry about Lucy. Look, it's completely fine. <laughs> Lucy's being serious. There's nothing wrong with her. Please take a look. Lucy's much tougher than she seems. Lucy's smiling. Lucy's smiling like a total fool. Lucy's smiling as if nothing's happened, like everything is fine. And I know she's not putting on a fake smile. That's why, for a split second, it made me see her as nothing but an ordinary robot. A lack of self-will. Blind obedience to father made me see her as a robot. And it was frustrating. It was frustrating that I saw her that way. I was mad at Lucy for smiling away like a fool. I was mad at my father for being so stubborn. And I was mad at myself the most, having trouble finding the words to say back to him. And just like that, I returned to my room, locked the door, and jumped under the blankets. I wonder while staring at the ceiling lights. What am I expecting from Lucy? How am I supposed to treat Lucy? I'm all over the same questions, even for it feels as if I've never. As if I'd never be able to reach a conclusion. Achievement unlocked. Enter on. Time for the robot? Not those one for the doctor, I mean. Oh, no. Ever 21st. Oh, right. What's going on? The school bell rings in the distance. I instinctively sling my bag over my shoulder, exchange my farewells, farewells with Dr. Gears, and head home. Same place that we already know from the game. It's a little chilly outside. Slip up my jacket. Can't believe it's winter already, I think to myself. 
Well, right, right here we got like half a meter of snow today, so I can believe it. I arrive in front of my house. I feel something off right away, but wondering why, then it hits me. Lucy is outside, waiting for me. Lucy has always made sure to greet me on my way home, but she isn't standing at her usual spot today. Feels out of the ordinary. Would she still be inside the house? My father might have asked her to do something weird again. Pass through the front door and head towards the living room. Don't sense anyone's presence inside the house. Lucy, are you here? I don't hear anything back. Doesn't seem to be in the living room. <sighs> Lucy, say something if you're home. Lucy, say something. There's no response. Search all over the house. Lucy's nowhere to be found. But she had some business to take care of. Don't look for her, damn it. She's not the type to leave for a long time without saying anything. It was strange. I'm reminded of the small argument I had with my father a few days back. I can't ignore the possibility that my father might have done something to her. Just circling around a few more times, finally make a decision. I probably mind, I prepared to leave the house. Maybe she'd gone to help out at the repair shop. Let's try that place first. That made the most sense to me, I was thinking like... The repair shop, maybe? And yeah, I'm all everything out of the look for. Ah! Lucy! I'm the out today. Is that really true? Yeah. I would ever lie about something like that. Alright then. I'm not here. Just where could she have disappeared to? She... She's not at home? No. Do you have any idea where she might be? Well, I wouldn't know. Are you sure she didn't run away because you were being too rough on her? Hmm. I don't have time to deal with this nonsense. I leave the repair shop. School? Not a good idea. This place. Random street, don't remember much about it. At this place where we run into her from time to time. <sighs> I can't tell how long I've been running around for. My lungs are burning up. I'm getting a metallic taste in my mouth. I just can't wrap my head around it. I could lose if one off to, but I'm pretty late. Maybe I should check home again. Maybe Lucy's already made it back. She might be the one worried about me right now. Maybe she still hasn't returned. Hmm. Continue searching. Im Let's continue searching for a little longer. Even though I feel like it's a good idea to go back home. I doubt that is the right decision. About waiting to catch my breath and breaking the run once more, run as hard as I can. I was taking some time to catch my breath, when suddenly someone gave me a tap on the shoulder. I spin around while shouting in desperation. Lucy! It's you, Lucy? Nope. It's just me. Oh, just you. Huh. You don't need to look that disappointed. It hurts, you know? And what do you want? Oh, I just happened to see you, so I decided to come say hello. What's up? You busy? Just leave me alone already. Yeah, I'm busy. 
are you looking for Lucy by any chance? Y yeah. Really? I actually went into it just a little while ago. W what? Did I hear him right? Where? Where did you see her? Where you ask? It was probably somewhere over there, but I can't say for sure. Try to remember. Hurry. Let's hang on a second. Where was it? Could it be that you're looking for the female android you were with before? It's a man I've met at a repair shop in the past. If it's her, I saw her at the junkyard a while back. Alright. I stopped by to dig around for some parts. There's a Lucy just standing there. Hey, where are you going? Where the junk yet? I guess your friend works there. Question mark? <laughs> I don't know why she would go there all of a sudden. There. There she is. That's the Lucy that I've been looking all over for. Standing by the spot where I first met her, gazing at the spot, frozen in place, she looks forlorn. She appears to be reminiscing about something, quietly watch her for a while, on the difficult to call her out, mostly because of how she looked so lifeless. Couldn't approach her because it felt as if she might disappear in the thin air the moment I called out to her. Only after a few minutes had passed, I finally opened my mouth. Lucy. Uh, master. Lucy finally notices me. It sounds faint. She looks as if she's just woken up from a dream. Just where have you been? Do you even know what time it is right now? I find myself raising my voice involuntarily. Meanwhile, Lucy simply returns to the stairs. A haste look, she responds. Oh, it's late already. Is it Lucy and Master worried sick? Lucy's very sorry. Who said I was worried? <laughs> I'm making things up. I wasn't worried about in this life. No, totally not. We just went over fucking everywhere to just find her. Please. Is that so? She flashes a mirthless smile, and she silently takes my hand. Master's hand is freezing. Master cold. Those words she places in my hand upon her cheek without hesitation. The pleasant warmth of her skin transforms over to my hand. Hmm. Looks like she's found out that I've been outside for quite a while. Feeling a little embarrassed, I quickly pull away from her. What were you doing all this time? Lucy was doing some grocery shopping for dinner. Since Lucy needs to win our final support, she can do a half on the job, right? Switch my glance over to the plastic bag Lucy's holding. Take a peek inside. You can see some eggs, green onions, garlic, various types of ground meat. And you could have just come home right after shopping. Why are you in here? Lucy found this place on her way home by chance. Lucy wanted to stop by. Lucy smoothly turns her gaze. I decide where I had first found her, she continues. Lucy must have must have been staring in the space. Quite a long while. Holy shit. Lucy never even noticed the master had arrived. Hmm. Lucy lifts her hand to point. Right at the spot. The spot where she once lied in a sorry state. This is where I found you, right? Yeah, 
Lucy was deep in thought and looked into his face, but as for Lucy, this is a place of fond memories. Fond memories? Am I hearing her right? Place of bond memories? And this is the place where you were abandoned. Wouldn't be a place of unpleasant memories? No, absolutely not. A place of fond memories where Lucy was able to meet Master. Hmm. That was quite optimistic of her. Lucy will never look at this place. Even if Lucy's memory chip plays down the must. Even if Lucy becomes no longer able to think properly, Lucy believes that at the very least she will never look at a meeting with Master. That's why this is a place of fond memories for Lucy. Definitely not a place of unpleasant memories. <laughs> like I've said before, you are exaggerating. Didn't help you with that kind of consideration in mind. Like Lucy has said before, that doesn't matter. The ultimate truth is that Lucy was saved. Mass is supposedly unintentional chest of kindness. Lucy was definitely saved. Well, we can't deny this. This is just straight up facts. Straight up facts. Lucy is watching me. Nothing to say. I hold out my hand. It's about time we had it back. It was awkward, even from the one offer in my hand. The way Lucy hesitated a little, showed that she's probably feeling the same way. I repeat myself. This time, with a bit more firmness. Don't just stand there. Let's go. Alright. Let's go home before it gets even colder. The cold of Lucy's reluctant hand. They begin to lead her along. Achieve on a locked place, a collection. There's no real achievements on Steam for so this is just weird. <sighs> Lucy looks at ease. For some reason, she seems a little happier too. Did you run into any trouble while shopping? Mm, no, Lucy was fine. Did you get the proper change? Of course! Lucy's balcony skills were right on the mark too! Lucy was the score herself for gift as much as in 98! That's a pretty generous scoring system she's using. I wonder if you really were alright. This is such a dangerous world out there. Can Master explain what he means by dangerous? I mean that the world is filled with all kinds of scammers and troublemakers, and just a lot of strange people in general. That's not true, Master. Everywhere Lucy went was full of kind people. Yeah, sure. By your standards, who wouldn't be kind? Master doesn't believe Lucy. They really were all kind. <laughs> hey, girl, that's one heck of a body walking there. How about you join us for a wild night? One of the people who Lucy Bar and Riff said something like this. Uh He was just trying to pick her up. Hey you! Need some money? How much do you need? I'm chill out in my place for a night and I can give you a stinking amount. What do you say? There was another chance man who said that while taking out his wallet. That's prostitution! That's just sad to say the least. Since when has this world become so rotten? Well, fun fact. It all has always been rotten, from the first case and will be rotten to the end. As long as humans drive this world, it is rotten to the core. You're not allowed to go shopping on your own anymore. Oh, why is that? What's making Master such a fan? Lucy didn't cause any problems, how did she do anything wrong? 
that's already a huge problem that you can't figure out what is wrong. The same as leaving an infant to want the streets alone. You'd be worried that something might happen to her. Please have mercy. Rosa can go shopping for food, but will she be able to cook for master who's starving at home? Being dramatic once you get here anywhere. From now on, you're not allowed to go shopping without me. Eh, that means... So why the Lucy goes with Master? Yeah. No choice but to say yes. And Lucy will do so far from now on. Hee <laughs> hee. <sighs> After that, we continued to talk about various nonsensical things on the way home. It was neither meaningful nor insightful conversation. It was something trivial that we would probably forget all about after night's sleep. But I had fun. Reading Lucy long while having a casual conversation, walking home together. It made me feel at home. It made me feel at ease for some reason. Okay, now we're gonna get some dark truth out of the doctor. Oh no, just that's me. Come on, there has to be a dark twist or something. Where is it? About time. Yeah, from the game time I have, we should either reach the end or me just making a playthrough of this, like, would take 10 hours then. Hard to say. The alarm clock is making a terrible racket. I instinctively reach out and shut it off. Then I try to get myself up. And we slept with her or something's wrong with us. But it ends in a failed attempt. Huh? Become engulfed in dizziness halfway up. Stumble and fall back down. My body feels. Heavy. My vision is faltering. I guess I need more sleep. I have no choice. Stay in bed for a little while longer. Lucy will come wake me up anyway. I'll sleep a little more until it's time to go to school. Oh, something is happening to her body. Master? Master? I open my eyes, let out a hastened breath. Lucy is quietly sitting beside me, this concerned look on her face. Oh, Master Wake? Lucy. Lucy places her hand on my forehead, freezing. Your hand feels cold. It's not. It's not that Lucy's hand is cold. Just that my side is fucking warm as crazy. My head? Mass's temperature is above normal at 38.5 degrees Celsius. 38.5 degrees? Yes, 38.5 degrees. Ah, uh, that explains it. You're an idiot if you don't notice it yourself. How do you how do you fall into bed by such milli degrees? My people back in the day, like, my blood related, I don't call them family, but my blood relatives, back when I was a young boy and I had to go to school, sent me to school with 49.9 degrees Celsius. Which pretty much is, like, really high, it was, like, 0 0.1 away from the 40 degrees, so, this is pretty fucked up, and they sent me to school. Oh, every time with that degrees, and even to work later on, so yeah. So just learn to work and do that while being sick because you just guess you don't have another choice. But yeah. Pretty fucked up. But I just needed more sleep. Only the appears that the fever was the culprit. It's true that I've been feeling too well lately. Must have caught a cold. 
I went outside in the freezing weather yesterday. It's probably a side factor. Must have been a pain anyone in particular? Mr. Lucy, the details. Ugh. Bloop. And I'm sleeping. Bye, oh, yeah. oh, okay. I oblige and tell her the condition I'm in. She opens my mouth and takes a peek inside. Then she proceeds to check something near my stomach area. It's like she's playing doctor or something. Mm. The piercing mass has caught a cold. A cold? Yes, but no way of the good rest. Can I really trust you on this? I have my doubts. The Lucy calling a professional, just in case. Wonder what kind of professional she could be talking about. She probably means a doctor. You don't need to. Very well. Then perhaps I should get fired a call. This time I respond without a moment's hesitation. There's no need to think it over. No, 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 please don't, no, no. Uh, Alright. Guess she has to take the day off from school. Does it work if the car? Nonsense. I don't need to take off a day off just because of something like try to get up. Only to be immediately shut down. Master! The sort of tone showed that she meant business. But making a peep, I lie back down. Master should not be moving around in this day. Please stay in bed. This will nurse Master back to health. You don't need to. Mine are cold like this is. Please stay in bed. Her tone was gentle, yet firm. Don't have the energy to argue anyway, so I decided to comply. Please rest for a little while longer. Lucy will go purchase some medicine. Ugh. The drowsiness slowly starts to settle in, disturbing at Lucy who was leaving my room, but before I knew it, everything had turned pitch black. When it came to, there was a wet towel placed on my forehead. It was a little warm. Is Master awake? Uh, yeah. How long was I asleep for? About 30 minutes. Only 30 minutes? Feels like I've slept for quite a while, though. Lucy switches out the towel on my forehead with another. The coolness of the new towel feels refreshing. For some reason, I suddenly grow embarrassed as I notice Lucy smiling at me. What? What are you doing while I was asleep? Lucy was looking over, Master. You didn't do anything strange just because I was sleeping, did you? Of course not. Lucy certainly didn't do anything like poking around in the Master's bed out of curiosity. You won't find anything there in the first place. Is that so? Lucy was taught that any... You for a teenager keeps precious under the bed, though. I wonder if she had learned that from the lamp. Come on now. No way I would hide mine in such an obvious place. I but Lucy's already inspected all the bookshelves filled with Master's history books. Ugh. I begin to fear for the safety of my collection. Master, Lucy has his medicine prepared. Medicine? Lucy points towards the table. A bottle of medicine is lying on top. Just in case, Master finds her in pills uncomfortable. Lucy has also prepared some syrup made for children. Nothing better. Now say, ah. He's holding a spoon filled with an unknown substance. Slowly pushes in my mouth. Just. Give me the pills. And the syrup is nice and sweet. Give me the pills. I won't take any medicine at all. Lucy pouts like a little child. She finally hands me the pills with some water. Swallowed them down immediately, the signal a large gulp. I lie back down. In the fruit flowers again. Well, I'm gonna get more sleep now. Close my eyes without waiting for a reply.
Okay, I'm, I got visitors right now, so I'm gonna turn the screen off now and we'll see you guys later in the next episode. Until then, have a great one.